guys, it's Cindy Leach, your Polymer Clay Tutor, and today's PCT Mini Toot, I'm going to show you how to do the mica shift technique. Now, a little while ago, I did a video um, all about mica and how it works in the metallic and pearl clays. You can see the article there, or the video there. And what we talked about was... Um, how the little shiny particles in the metallic clays and the pearl clays will have um, a certain behavior d according to how they're aligned. And if you haven't seen that video, you should go make sure to check that out because it, it really will help you understand this whole process. But one of the really cool things it, that you can do is you can move those mica particles and manipulate them and get them to look dimensional, even if they're completely flat. And let me just show you some examples so it makes some sense to you. All right. Um, first of all, I'll show you a sheet of clay that I've done the mica shift uh, technique to. And this one has... Um, a, a snake skin pattern on it and it looks very dimensional but if you look at it from the side it's actually completely smooth and that's because we've moved the mica particles in the clay to the side trimmed it and did a few things which I'll show you in a second and here's a few pieces of uh, jewelry made I, I looked for some more but I couldn't find them in my stuff but um, here is uh, some uh, hollow beads that I made using the mica shift technique and this is just gold clay that has been cut and put together and on here's a couple of other pieces this is um, from the uh, oh what is it the mermaid scales technique uh, tutorial that I did a long time ago but this is where I've done a Skinner blend using um, a couple of different colors of pearl clay and then um, manipulated the layers and trimmed them and then uh, polished them up and stuff it looks very cool and then here's a double-sided bead here where I've done the technique in two different colors um, kind of an olive color and then a purple color now the types of clay that you're going to need to use is a metallic or pearl clay um, I use Primo because Primo has the highest mica content in it of the different brands and you get the best effect from it you can use silver gold bronze uh, copper there's a really cool um, peacock pearl color there's um, a light green pearl or bright green pearl I always get that wrong bright green pearl and there's a few others that you can use that are really cool for that. I'm going to use a color called Purple Pearl and um, just because we haven't used it yet here and I'm going to run it through the pass machine. Now I've talked about um, in that other video I was referring to it's important that you run your um, pearls and metallics through the pass machine over and over by folding it in half and running it through doesn't matter if you put it in this way so with the fold to the side or with the fold to the bottom but you need to just keep uh, layering or folding it and running it through until all the particles start laying flat and you can tell it it's ready to go when you get quite an even sheen to the piece if it's all modeled on the back side here it's a, it will be a little modeled you'll be able to see different colors and streaks and marbling and stuff so this top side is good to go so we'll just start there and you need some sort of texture you can either use like a texture sheet like these ones from uh, Sculpey or you can use a rubber stamp or you can even press objects into it but what we want to do is we want to press those shiny mica particles into the surface of the clay and distort the other ones so I'm just going to put a little bit of water spritz some water on this texture stamp so it doesn't get too stuck in the clay and this one happens to be a snake pattern whatever pattern you want will work great and we just want to press it as deeply into the clay as you can and with these particular uh, texture sheets you can tell if you pressed it well when it starts to get dark because you can see through the clay so I'm just going to really press down hard and make sure that it's really 
impressed, embossed, whatever you want to call it, into that clay. Then what you've got is a sheet of clay with all of your texture on it. And now, a lot of people will, when they, okay, the next thing we have to do is we have to shave off the top layer and that will um, expose some of the, the mica, you'll see in a sec. But a lot of people, they'll, they'll show you how to do it by just scraping your blade across this way, but it's very difficult not to gouge into your piece and cut deeper than you should. So here's a really easy little trick. And you need a round surface, it doesn't matter, I'm just gonna use my um, uh, rubbing alcohol jar or bottle here. And it makes it so that it's real easy to j slice through the top layer. And what you wanna do, and you can do this at the table or holding it, you wanna cut only the top raised surface and then leave, leave uh, cut right down to where the bottom of those little dents are. So maybe from this angle, it'll be easiest to show you. But if I just cut the top layer off and you can see I'm gonna end up with kind of a little lacy thing happening here. You cut down to the bottom of the where you stamped to, but you don't want to cut any deeper than that. And you can just cut along, taking little swipes at it until you've uh, removed just the top layer. Now this takes practice, of course, like everything does. So, but this, you'll find that this is a lot easier if you have it on a rounded surface because then you're not having to um, gouge into it. So I'm just going to go around and remove the, just the top layer. Now we can perfect this and make it even smoother by running it through the pasta machine in a minute. So, so I'm just going to cut this along the surface. You'll be really surprised how cool this turns out. Um, and uh, you can use um, all kinds of things, like I said, stamps and things. You can press words in with word stamps. It's a very neat technique. And also, because it works with any of the metallics or pearls, you can mix your own colors together and come up with your own custom colors. You don't just have to use them out of the pack. You can do uh, teardrop blends and Skinner blends with the different metallics. And uh, you can get your own custom look. It's very cool. So you have to go around the whole thing and just remove that top layer. Maybe I should have got a smaller piece so it wouldn't take me so long. All right, so I'm just about there. And the nice thing also about having a bottle, it can fall, all these little pieces can fall down below and they don't have to get all stuck on your piece again. Okay, so I would be a little pickier, but I'm running out of time here. So what I'm gonna do next is that, eh, it's not perfect, but it, it'll do. And I'll show you what we can do next is we can run it through the pasta machine at the same setting it was last at. So we'll start like this. And this will smooth off the layers on the top. And we'll run it through at another setting down. And you're going to see very quickly, yeah, we're almost there. There's still a couple of little scrape marks, but you can see the pattern is all still there, but it's actually totally smooth. I'll do it one more time and you can change direction so you're not distorting your pattern too much. But see how cool that is? So even though this is just silky smooth, you've got the dimension of that snake skin there. And there's a lot of, you can make cool beads, cut them out into neat pendants, all kinds of cool projects you can use with that. This technique also responds very well to sanding and buffing, like I did with my pieces here. They really need that sanding and buffing to make after they're baked, of course. <laughs> you can't sand them when they're raw. But after they're baked, and, and I've got videos on sanding and buffing and stuff all, as well, but it just brings out that metallic shine and the depth 
and all the cool dimension that you get from this neat technique. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like this video, do let us know. And if you have any questions about polymer clay, there's a chance that we have already done a video on it. So you want to make sure to search through um, our site and our channel to see if we might have already done uh, a video on whatever it is that you need to learn about. If not, then make sure to leave a suggestion in the comment section below and we can make a video on it. All right, so we'll see you next time and bye for now.